Viewer discretion is advised. According to Norse mythology and my drunk Swedish father, there exists a colossal and monstrous serpent. This serpent has its coils spread around the world and the world tree. It will also battle the mighty Thor to the death. He said that the world serpent is no myth. It actually exists, and he has proof. Understandably, when I heard this, I chalked it up to my dad having a little too much to drink. But then he pulled out the pictures. What I saw was nothing short of mystifying, and it made me feel incredibly small in the universe. I saw the body of a serpent that was easily dozens of feet wide and tall, spreading endlessly through a vast frozen cavern. When I asked my dad how he was even able to get such photos, or if they were real, he went silent for a minute. He then explained that it was an old friend of his, now passed away, who took them. Shortly after taking these photos and presenting them to my dad a few decades ago, his friend fell ill. It was just a fever at first, but then deafness followed, then blindness, and eventually paralysis, all in the span of 48 hours. His flesh became necrotic and dripped off his body in chunks an hour or two before his death. My father called it the Curse of Jormungandr. Hello everybody, I'm The Rubber. Today, we bring you SCP Foundation Keter Class Object SCP-722. SCP-722, also known as Jormungandr, is an enormous serpentine entity found frozen in a glacial cavern in Greenland. Hypothesized by Foundation researchers to have been sleeping since even before the 11th century, this monstrous serpent is estimated to be 8 miles long with a muscular body. However, who built the tunnels within this cavern wherein 722 sleeps? The Foundation does not know. What is known is that some portions of 722's head and tail are covered in an ancient Nordic script. Although it is partially buried and encased in glacial ice, not to mention being in deep slumber, the Foundation remains cautious. Should 722 awaken, the Foundation fears it will threaten all of humanity due to its sheer size. It is reported that people who discovered 722 quickly fell ill and died, all from being in close proximity of 722 and not necessarily touching it. If its very existence is a poison, the Foundation shudders at what else it is capable of. The following recording provides a short glimpse into what havoc may come should 722 awaken. My name is Cole, and I'm an archivist for the Foundation. Today, I am given the opportunity to report on the automatic defensive capabilities of the serpentine entity 722. First and foremost, the toxin is yet to be identified, unsurprisingly. When a person comes in contact with the poison dripping from its body or the gas it emits, they will fall ill almost instantaneously. Once the poison has entered a person's system, they are as good as dead. One can forget about an antidote, as all attempts at creating one have failed. Further testing is required as the panacea pills have yet to be administered to infected individuals. However, doing so in addition to normal testing of the poison prove extremely difficult. The poison is observed to disintegrate and becomes completely harmless after being removed from the cave. This means all testing must be conducted near the body of 722, putting everyone involved at risk of death. Some say that the poison is not for defensive purposes at all. Instead, it is to be used in combat against the God of Thunder. At least, that's how the myth goes. Also, it should be noted that the poisonous gas 722 emits is not as deadly as the liquid its body secretes. Still dangerous regardless. Explorations into the glacial cavern are forbidden, except in the case of maintenance. This is due to an incident where 722 has shown an increase in brain activity. Frightened by this, the Brigadier General of Site 103 has declared that anyone seen entering or leaving 722's cavern will be shot on sight. No questions asked, regardless of their standing in the Foundation. I do not think he was kidding, as I've heard several gunshots in the middle of the night once. On my last day, I had the pleasure of witnessing 05-1 in action as he discussed with the Site Director and several researchers about what to do with 722 should it awaken. Obviously, the first measure to be taken would be to evacuate Site 103 and all nearby towns and cities. Researchers also believe that due to 722's sheer size and its tough hide, any attempts to damage it using conventional weaponry would be useless. 
Our only chance would be to have several thaumaturgical cannons on Site 103 to try and kill it, and pray to God it works. Should this fail, Site Director L has proposed getting SCP-190-DE to help in containing or even slaying 722. If the Nordic stories are true, then he might be our only chance. 190? Ugh, Thorsten Nordman? Love the guy, but he should not be counted on. Hasn't Thorsten declared himself the protector of Midgard? Surely, if we called on him to help with 722, he would answer. <laughs> you would think so, wouldn't you? Ask yourself this. Where was Thorsten when the Kaju wrecked havoc on the world? Where was Thorsten when SCP-6004 slaughtered millions? Thorsten is incredibly powerful. This is true, without a doubt. While he possesses power beyond imagination, he is incredibly out of practice when it comes to fighting. Moreover, we have him on phone records where we think he told his father, Odin, that he refused to fight the snake. As difficult as this may be to hear, Thorsten is a non-factor. Always has been, and most likely always will be. Site Director L fell silent as he realized he was unable to refute what his superior had said. But do not fret, we already have something in the works. Ever since the incident with 6004 and the Kaiju, we have been working on an armor dubbed Myonir Type 3. It is an advanced combat exoskeleton that fully seals around the wearer. It filters out all toxins and comes equipped with miniature thaumaturgical weapons. It also makes the user stronger and faster to the point that they become a god relative to humanity. Gentlemen, who would like to sign up and become a real protector of Midgard? No experience needed. Myonir has automatic defensive capabilities. Fair warning though, you'll be fighting entities on the level of gods. It was then that I raised my hand. I was accepted without question by the council. And while I have yet to begin testing with the Myonir armor, I could feel that the foundation has gotten one step closer to securing, containing, and protecting our fragile little world with what it promised. Or so it would seem. Just then, my father burst through the door. No. The Myonir plan, or whatever you have in mind, must not proceed. The Jormungandr must not be disturbed. Father? What on earth are you doing here? Who is this man? And how did he get in here? Security! You must not touch the World Serpent. Otherwise, a great apocalypse will befall us. <laughs> what, what are you doing? Let me go! As he struggled to fight off the guard's hold, 051 walked forward and calmly dismissed them. What are you saying? What apocalypse? My father sat down to catch his breath. He handed me a couple slides and told me to put it under the projector. The first image showed a comparison between the frozen 722 and what looked like an ancient symbol, which looked eerily like 722. Jormungandr, the world serpent, must remain as it is. You see, the way it's grasping its tail? That's the Araboros, the seal that keeps the world's balance together. It must not be broken. I turned to the next image, which sent the room into murmurs. It was a series of paintings as well as carved ancient runes and scripts which corresponded to that ones on 722. The paintings depicted 722 now having released its tail from its grasp, engaging in battle against a few human figures. That's Ragnarok, or part of it. What you're seeing here is a fierce battle between two mortal enemies, Vormungandr and Thor or Thorsten Nordman, as you call him. Wait a minute, you mean it happened before? Eons ago, Jormungandr released its tail and caused violent unrest. The serpent thrashed onto land and flooded it. It advanced and sprayed poison, filling the air and water. It confronted the gods, and Thor stepped forward to fight it. They fought a bloody battle that lasted days and nights. Ultimately, Thor was able to fend off Jormungandr and brought back Ouroboros, the balance of the world. But we still detect signs of life from this Jormungandr, and if Thor could defeat it back then, surely he can do it again, and more easily this time with our gear. He won only because of the help from other gods. Why do you think Thor didn't help fend off 6004? The poison of Jormungandr wounded Thor deeply. It almost killed him if it wasn't for Ear's healing powers. Even then, the poison had severely crippled him. Another battle with an entity of such caliber would mean certain death. The room fell silent. 05-1 let out a sigh 
and walked out without saying anything. Site Director L only patted me on my shoulder and followed 05-1. Soon, everyone left the room. Only me and my father remained. I looked at the image and shuddered. If the gods had this much trouble to contain that thing, what chance do we even have? I guess the glacier is the only thing standing between the continuation and end of civilization. Remember to check out my new animation channel, The Rubber Talks, where I share my life story, thoughts, and opinions. Just click on the link in the description to enter the rubber's world. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Which SCP do you want to see in the next video and why it is interesting? Let us know in the comment below. We will draw your story and share it with the world. Don't forget to click like, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell. Please share it to your friends if you like this video. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.